And uh, then I will uh, welcome you all to the January 25th, 2024 uh, Northampton Planning Board meeting. Uh, first one of the new year. I'm Melissa Fowler. I'm filling in this evening as chair. And uh, we have two hearings in front of us tonight. One is for 40 Fort Street, and the other is for 14 Garfield Street. So the first thing we like to do with these meetings is um, we open it up for public comment. And this is a time if anybody has public comment that is not related to either one of those two hearings. Um, this is a time that you can come on up and make a statement. Just approach the state, uh, the podium, if you have anything that you'd like to say. And then we'll check. We have um, we have Zoom folks with us, and they're allowed to um, speak to us via chat, the chat function only. So we'll just check occasionally to see um, if there are any chats. And I don't see anything. Anybody? Did you say that isn't related? Correct. We'll take we'll take public comment for each of those hearings at those times. So, okay. Not seeing any chat. Okay. So we're not seeing any any chat, and uh, nobody here in the uh, hearing room. So with that, we'll move on to our um, first hearing, which is a continuation from December fourteenth for a site plan review to add a second detached two family by Goodview LLC at 40 Fort Street, map ID 38B173. Um, green, what's that? Are you green? Uh, I am not green, I am green now, thank you. Um, and I presume I can share my screen. Uh, I do have to sign in. Sign. Mm -hmm. oh, windows. Oh, no, here we are. I don't know. There were two windows. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Jeff Squire. I'm with the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of uh, Sheehan and Cece, who are the current owners of uh, 40 Fort Street, which is located sort of in the southeast corner of Fort Street as it wraps around the bend um, before it drops off into the floodplains and um, tend to the east. Um, it's a property in a neighborhood with, you know, pretty dense, uh, development. Um, this particular parcel is about, uh, it's just over 0.4 acres. Um, and as you can see from the, you know, image, there's only about half of it that is currently developed. Um, a couple of images, just looking into the, into the current driveway, the existing two family, um, is located on the right side of those pictures. Um, that yellow house in the back is um, is the neighboring property to the south. Um, and it's as I said, it's it's currently um, a 0.4 acre parcel. It's located in the URB district, and there's a uh, two dwelling units on the on the current property. Um, let's see, we're over here. Couple more images. This, um, you know, let me get this. Well, a couple more images on the bottom. Just again, looking into the backyard um, beyond the car. That's mostly the the undeveloped portion of the parcel. Um, and then that lower left hand image is um, is sort of that fork and fork uh, Fort Street. The property that um, we are looking at is that gray house that you see the um the end of there and that beyond the telephone pole um the uh existing survey um again two family house um there's currently four six five parking spaces four parking spaces um that that face in there's a garage here that is mostly used for storage um and a single driveway and curb cut off of ford street and then the large undeveloped portion of the property in the in the rear um the proposal is to build a uh, a new duplex in the rear of the uh, of the property in that uh, existing green space, with the two family existing up in the front, 
Um, the entire footprint is, um, and this is part of the delay and, and cause for uh, continuance in December. They didn't have all the architectural worked out quite yet for, for this building. So we have finally gotten there. And so this building um, overall is about, is, is 915 square feet. Um, there's a front porch uh, that faces south. Uh, shed roof, as you'll see in some of the architectural um, images later, and then this rear terrace, um, sort of at grade terraces in the back of the of the units. Um, there's side by side units, sort of a mirror image of each other. Um, parking has just been rearranged, um, turned 90 degrees. There's a fence um, on the north side of the property. We're proposing um, a, a wood screen fence on the south side of the property. Just being sensitive to to headlights um, and the proximity of the the abutting neighbor, um, but there are six cars there. Um, we the building sits within the within the existing setbacks. There's a, a dry well and rain garden is is a landscape element in the lower right hand corner um, to accept roof water and drainage from the parking lot, which really doesn't increase in in area a whole lot. It's really just the additional uh, the building uh, square footage. Um, building, um, most of these, um, all of these designs have been developed by Kuhn Riddle. So this is what we were really waiting for. So, um, again, just some schematic images of, um, what that duplex looks like with the shed roof, uh, again, facing South, uh, for solar purposes. Um, there's that entryway and walkway on the, on the South side and, um, the resemblance of a rain garden off, you know, in this, in this area here, um, lower floor, upper floor. Um, there are two bedrooms uh, upstairs in each unit, and then a common space kitchen living on the on the lower level. Um, again, some elevations, um, hardy clapboard, um, a lot of the you know sort of standard materials you you might expect um, from um, from Cunrill and and their design. So uh, again, just running through the site set. Um, I don't know if there's any specific questions. No. Um, we did uh, provide a planting plan. Um, there's no, we did propose a small um, residential scale post light um, sort of along that walkway just off the corner of the building. Um, again, it's a six, eight foot tall, you know, residential fixture um, like you see here in the lower left hand corner. Um, so it's really not a, a, you know, intended to light the parking lot. There's more than enough ambient light in this neighborhood to safely light this parking lot. Um, and um, I did, um, we are aware, or did receive the DPW comments from the original submission. A lot of those have been corrected in the updated um, set. We realize there's going to be a handful of things that we'll just need to coordinate with them as, as they approach a building permit. Um, but um, if there are any specific questions, happy to answer any of those. Um, um, the DPW comments did mention something about the dry well that no analysis was provided. Um, other, other, they seem to be, they're not saying they're not okay with it, right? Right. Maybe, Jeff, you could um, be more specific about what you submitted to them and receive an additional comment. But again, the biggest thing is they want to confirm that it won't handle the water. So I don't know if you've submitted right. the calculation. So we, yeah, so we, Right. So we haven't, I mean, there's certainly, a, I mean, the maintenance plan is, is simple enough to do. Um, the calculations, obviously, this is under an acre. Um, there's not a stormwater permit that's required. Um, we're happy to give them, you know, some calculations based on what we have here. Um, again, we're, you know, it was, it wasn't intended to hold a hundred year storm or, you know, there's not, there's not some standard that we're trying to meet other than just saying that we're providing some additional volume to compensate for the, you know, the a thousand square feet of additional impervious or so on the site that this creates. So it's not a huge amount of area, but we will certainly coordinate with them. And has our um, our new lighting ordinance been adopted at this point? Um, you, um, can certainly comment and require anything for the site plan. Do you have a fair question to do that? Just the one light post, mm -hmm. um, and that'll have to not shine into the neighbor's yards. Sure. I mean, it'll have to comply with this ordinance that's pending. Mm -hmm. 
I just clarify that's not allowed anyway, even before the, you know, that's under current before the modification. Mm -hmm. So everything has to be downlit right. and stay on site. Yeah. And if any lighting is added to the building, I didn't see any shown currently, but if there's any added, that'll also have to comply. Um, I imagine there'll be some, you know, um, downlit lighting, some can lights underneath that entry canopy. Um, you know, obviously a lot of those details haven't been worked out. Um, why is this? The, insofar as the post light, yeah, this, I mean, at least this, this is the, the intent is for res again, the residentially scaled sort of post light with LED fixtures in the, in the top hood of that. So it's about as, you know, compliant as those lights come, I guess. Certainly is not going to be a 4,000 Kelvin. You can add the color temperature to the condition mm. um, because those lights could come in at, you know, bright or lighter mm. uh, color temperature. Mm. Um, the other elements will, they'll have to meet those lights that will be bright. So, that's and all of that. Just color temperature. Yeah. Do you guys have any comments before we open it up? Questions? Okay. Then at this point, we'd like to open in, um, the hearing up to public comment. If you do have any uh, comments on this hearing, please approach the podium and just tell us your name and where you live for the record. Okay, don't everybody stampede. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have any chat comments? <clears throat> no, not for this. Okay. Um, screening. Um, one side already has a stockade fence and the other side's getting a new fence? Yes. Yeah, we proposed a four-foot fence only because um, two reasons. If you see in this image in the upper right here, it's really the end of this building is is where that parking lot is, and there's one high window, and it just it felt awkward to put a you know eight foot or six foot fence that close. So um, the four foot would definitely block you know at least any headlights or you know shield any headlights directly, and there's there's not much going on at that secure elevation to begin with. So. Um, Room to push snow. This all the stormwater, all the drainage is intended to go into this rain garden. So I imagine there will be some that we pushed into this landscape bed here, and then the rest would get pushed into you know this you know this collection area. And there's obviously a, a quite a bit of green space on the right side of the driveway as you come in that would accept snow from the from the driveway. <clears throat> And I, I will comment um, for anyone listening that this plan has been revised from eight parking spaces down to six. Um, and, and, it, and it can be that way because the units are under 800 square feet each. So they only require a minimum of, of one parking space. Uh, no question. Yeah. Um, did you so can you describe the height of the fence there with the three parking spaces and what the separation is to the lot line with that fence and then to the residential structure that's just on the other side of that fence? Mm, so you're on the, on the south side? Yep. Um, so the fence, at least in this plan, is shown about a foot off the edge of the driveway. Um, the exist the structure, the neighboring structure. Um you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's probably two feet from that based on this guy. I don't know the exact measurements. It's probably about a four foot distance overall. And the fence is maybe a third to a quarter of that. And what's in that location now? Uh, there's nothing the lawn? Right now. Okay. 
there's some so then they'll many shrubs there on the right but yes okay so there'll be lawn and then and then in the proposed condition there'll be three parking spaces going sort of nose into that structure right. with um what did you say six foot fence uh four, four foot four foot and it was really just trying to trying not to provide this you know dark corridor in the back of that house but it could be taller if And is the applicant um, going to be making a payment for in lieu of traffic mitigation? Uh, yes, I would expect they would. So it'd be 1000 per unit, so for a total of $2,000 for the added two units. Um, it is solar ready. Yep. It is all electric, I presume. Yes. <clears throat> What else? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, so no, no comments from the crowd here. Nothing in Zoom. No chats. Okay. Do we want a motion to close the public comment? Go for it. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we vote, is it? Oh, right, we gotta do that too, but we don't have to vote on closing the... <laughs> okay, what's, what's, I mean, what's the roll call? Roll call. That's need, what I mean. Yeah, we gotta vote. You need, you need to make sure everyone's in favor of that, but not by Okay, okay. All right, all in favor of closing the public uh, comment section. There we go, there we go, we got it. We got it. Um, okay, then is there a motion uh, one way or the other on this project? Yeah, what are the conditions? <laughs> I, I believe the conditions are going to be the, um, the color temperature of any potential lighting fixtures has to be a maximum of 3,000, right? That we argued about that one over in our in our meeting. Um, Is it three thousand? Yeah, we. we <laughs> so you, no, but what was it in the new lighting? I it, thought it was. It hasn't gone through yet. I know, but what was it? Between three thousand and twenty-seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah. The unanimous and it was unanimous. The recommendation was to go with seven hundred. Yeah. So we'll go with with that. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and uh, there will be a payment of $2,000 uh, in lieu of traffic mitigation. Are we missing anything? Stormwater maintenance should be with. Yep. Okay. So, do you hear that? Stormwater uh, maintenance should be recorded with the decision. Anybody? Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor? Okay. It's been unanimously approved by the four of us. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then we will move on to our second hearing of the evening, which is a major site plan review to build two triplex units, uh, which are 9,000 square feet by New Way Homes at 14 Garfield Street, map ID. 17D-64, and I believe the applicant has a presentation. I do. Let me just load all the PDFs in advance so less hiccups here.
that is a good address. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right. Good evening, Rebecca Lee with Arla Beck Associates located at 40 School Street in Westfield. Um, here tonight on behalf of the applicant New Way Homes LLC to present the proposed um, residential development at 14 Garfield Street. Um, <clears throat> This property is currently zoned um, in the URB district. Um, it's currently vacant. Um, it has been historically developed with a um, single family residence that has since been demolished. Um, the proposed improvements include two triplexes towards the front of the site with a drive, one curb cut and a drive aisle um, on the western side of the of the site that extends to the rear um, to where there is a 12 space parking lot that meets the zoning ordinance requirements. Um, we also have an ADA accessible um, spot that's also within the requirements. Um, we also have an area in the south western corner for um, refuse and um, bike storage. And there is a six foot high proposed stockade fence around the um, parking area. I can highlight that for you if you want. It starts here, comes around and terminates right where the, the sidewalk is. Um, the grading plan here, so the, the site is fairly flat. Um, so we lowered it slightly in order to get the runoff to sheet flow towards uh, the low point, which is right here where my cursor is. I don't know if you can see that, um, but that's a, a catch basin location. So um, the idea and the intent is to collect all stormwater runoff from the um, proposed uh, paved area via that uh, low point on site. <clears throat> Once the runoff is collected uh, via the catch basin, um, the catch basin is equipped with a water quality unit that will treat the, the runoff prior to discharging to the subsurface infiltration basin, where it will be further treated and um, provide recharge back into to the soils. Uh, this, this subsurface infiltration basin is equipped to attenuate up to a hundred year storm. So there will be no discharge back to the municipal system until that hundred year storm threshold is met. Um, additionally, we've got some water connections, proposed domestic and fire protection. Um, electrical and um, sewer. And I do wanna note on, while we're on this sheet, I spoke with Carolyn earlier today. Um, there is a shade tree that would be, um, would interfere with the location of where that overflow tie-in to the municipal system is. Therefore, we looked at redesigning the overflow connection and we are intending to send it back down the drive aisle um, and connect into the municipal storm drain um, you know, via that route so that we could save that shade tree. Sorry, yeah, sure. Yep. So there is a um, shade tree located in the right of way, which is not indicated on the drawing. It's, it's, it's approximately where my mouse is here. Um, and the root systems would be, um, would interfere with where that, that drain line is being proposed. 
So instead of cutting through the pervious grass area along the eastern side here, we're going to um, relocate the outlet control structure um, over here, shift the catch basin slightly, and tie into the municipal municipal um, storm drain line down the drive aisle. Thank you. Yep. As far as landscaping goes, um, we're proposing various plantings around the site, including some landscape mulch areas in the front um, to enhance aesthetics, um, some, some uh, tupelos, some hydrangeas, and some river birches as well. Um, and I, th after discussion with Carolyn, um, the tree warden recommended to potentially move those tupelos that are in the front here into the right of way to be considered um, street trees, street shade trees. So that summarizes the um, overview of the site design. I can jump right into the review of the architectural drawings unless the board um, would like to ask any questions um, kind of in between. Um, uh, can we just talk for a second before you go to architectural about any trees? Sure. I yeah. didn't see any demo. Yeah, so that yeah. was added to Rev A. And it's on this plan here. Um, there is a one significant tree that is located on the property. Um, and I apologize, I missed this. Um, it's a 44 inch diameter tree um, that was assessed by the, um, the arborist. Um, and we've submitted a, a tree assessment plan. And he determined that that tree is hazardous and the, um, uh, remediation is to remove the tree and I can pull that up too if you'd like to see that, that assessment. oh I've, I've I saw that okay. Um, okay so um fine that's fine you can continue on okay. thank you yep. any other questions before I jump into the architecturals oh all right um And our architect, Bon Worthington, is on Zoom. Um, so I know that he probably can't speak, but he can use the chat, right, Carolyn? Okay. All right, so I apologize, Bon. I probably won't do your plans justice, but we're gonna do our best here. Um, so the, the proposed triplex, um, we're proposing a covered entryway. Um, per the, the zoning ordinance requirements. Um, we've also got a back deck for each story um, that the first level is ADA accessible. Each story is equipped with two bedrooms, um, a living area, kitchen, and the main entry point would be via the front door here with a stairwell going to the upper levels. So these are just the floor plans. Again, two bedrooms for each story. These are some um, black and white renderings here, um, kind of giving you an idea of you know front side rear elevations. Um, and then I will jump over to the colored renderings that will give you a better idea um, of what it will look like. So this is just an example. Um, the idea is to, you know, have the the darker um, siding with some natural wood tones incorporated into the exterior. And um, as far as the interior goes, it's it's designed to be a more open floor um, concept. Um, the it's three stories, um, and see what else we got here. So this is from looking from the front, get the nice bay window with the covered porch. And this is looking at it from the rear where you have that um, triple decker um, deck for each story to be able to have some outdoor space. And there is, I forgot to mention, there is um, a basement level 
um, that will be accessible for storage purposes for the tenants. So these are the architectural renderings. Um, there has been some comments that have come in and we've seen some um, emails from abutters. So I'd like to just briefly touch upon some um, concerns that they have and, and um, you know, we can certainly address further planning board comments as well and further abutter comments as well. So I just want to start out. Um, I know that there was some concern about, you know, the character in the neighborhood and, um, you know, we did do an analysis and looked at, you know, the other the other houses in the neighborhood, as well as the proximity to um, downtown, to the bike trail, um, to make sure that this really does fit within uh, this neighborhood. So just to highlight, this is our parcel here that's highlighted in red. Um, currently, there's all of the abutters along the eastern, western, and southern side, um, it abuts their backyards. So there's nobody that's directly, you know, no dwelling that's directly adjacent to um, where these proposed um, triplexes are. Just to provide some insight here, so just driving around, you know, the direct neighborhood, um, there's a lot of two and a half story structures that are very comparable in what the height will be for um, the, the the new triplexes. This is actually um, Garfield Street right behind here, right before that the, the house was demolished. Um, these two houses here um, are, will be very comparable in height. I believe the height of our triplex is around 32 feet. Um, so it, it will be comparable. And again, this is kind of diagonal from the site, 25 Garfield Ave, um, comparable in size and height. And then this is right around the corner where you got that, you know, two and a half, three story um, structures. Um, the neighborhood also has various um, duplexes as well as there are some um, further multifamily. So there's a, a five-family house located on 95 High Street, four-family house located on 21 North Maple Street. Um, we've got the Meadowbrook apartments that are um, adjacent on the other side of, um, of Straw, I believe that is, and that's three stories in height. And then you have the Silk Mill apartments that are also three stories in height, you know, high density. Um, this site is close to downtown Florence. This is all within a half a mile um, to 0.6 miles of the site. And the um, Northampton Bikeway is, is very close to our site. So um, the idea is to, you know, enhance and promote um, travel by bike versus via vehicles. Um, and then we've got the the school down down there in the the DPW. So, you know, we feel that this is a good fit for the neighborhood, and this is kind of just some examples of um, you know higher density and similar um, structures. Um, I also want to point out, um, as far as parking goes, I know there was some concerns about parking. Um, we are meeting the zoning ordinance requirement. So, you know, we the thousand one space per thousand feet square feet and maxing out at two. So we max out at two um, for each dwelling. So we are providing the 12 parking spaces that's required. Um, we've, you know, taken the initiative to try and reduce the amount of, you know, light pollution, headlight pollution, noise pollution by putting that six foot high stockade fence around the parking lot area um, and trying to leave it, you know, open to the neighborhood in the front. Um, and let's see what else, open space. So on the revised plan set, um, there were a couple questions about open space and the calculations. So I did add the square footage of the buildings 
on the revised plan set. I also included the square footage of the parking area and the drive aisle. We are right at that 40% open space requirement. We did make sure that we met that regulation. Um, preservation of trees. There's really only two trees that need to be demolished to accommodate our, our um, proposed improvements. Um, solar, the houses will, the triplexes will be equipped for, you know, solar power in accordance with the, um, the energy code. Um, light pollution, we are not proposing any site lighting. It is a tight site, so we don't have any, you know, space for, for direct site lighting, but we will have some sconces on the exterior of the building, which will, of course, meet all sort of, you know, light zoning ordinance requirements. Um, another comment was regarding electrical vehicle ready spaces. It's my understanding that this is um, a requirement for commercial developments with more than 15 parking spaces. So that would not um, be a requirement for this project. Hopefully I touched on a lot of the concerns. However, like I said, you know, we're willing and, and hopefully we can address all questions, further questions. And The um, message, um, chat message from the architect um, further explaining uh, that it will be open to the plans um, and access to daylight. Um, the their first floor accessible units um, and durable fiber cement siding um, and quality materials. The design of buildings fit into the New England style with bay windows, elevated front porches and street facing doors. And finally, that um, these units will be all electric. Thank you, Bud. Well, I know we have a lot of people here that wanna um, comment. So uh, just before we do that, do we have, do any of you guys want to say anything before we open it up for, okay. We are gonna open it up for public comment then. Um, please just, Come to the podium and tell us who you are and where you live. And we're going to ask you to try and keep your comments to about two or three minutes. Yeah, it's told three minutes. And okay. I'll talk okay. okay. <laughs> Hi. And I submitted a letter earlier today and photographs. Uh, my name is Jane Myers. I live at 74 Straw, that yellow house that you saw. That top floor was a little attic with very short knee walls. Um, my backyard butts the boundary of 14 Garfield Street, and I would face the apartments and the parking lot. Um, I was only not able to review with the new things that were submitted, so I'm based on what I saw online. The plan submitted for the development um, for these triplexes uh, actually, I believe, mask and omit critical information, at least the ones we were able to review as the public. The plans that we saw did not provide complete dimensions of the lot, offset dimensions to buildings, to the buildings close to the boundary line that would be affected by the construction, the location of the fences, potential surface runoff, et cetera. And um, now that you're saying that we, we weren't able to calculate there was really 40% open space because the figures weren't there. Um, I really feel that the context that was provided by uh, the presenter wasn't really accurate to what I see when I live in the neighborhood. And I submitted some photos of Garfield Street with small houses. Uh, some of those big buildings that were, I, I don't recognize some of them, but they're from far, farther off. And the straw mill building there is right on Route 9, so it's not really part of the rural neighborhood. I mean, the immediate neighborhood. Um, the plans do not show the narrowness of Garfield Street, which has no curbs or sidewalks and barely has room for two cars to pass one another. Any guest or visitor parking on the street will have an impact on access for public safety uh, uh, vehicles and on pedestrian safety. Um, the zoning code that I was able to find said that parking for more cars needs to be distributed and not on a lot. And I was told that that's because we don't want to see a parking lot from the street because that affects neighborhood character. The problem is that the lot is now about is right next to the fence of three of a backyard fence of three of us. And um, so it's really affecting the character, the neighborhood character of our houses and by the of the neighbors who live there. 
And even a fence will not sufficiently, I believe, mitigate the potential noise and light of cars and all the delivery vehicles. Our yards are fairly small, so this is very close. I believe that squeezing two large triple deckers for a total of six families with a potential occupancy of 36 people and an expansive paved parking lot for 12 cars plus dumpster and bike storage on land previously serving one family is infill that is too dense and intense for this quiet and low density neighborhood. Two, du two duplexes serving four fam families could be a good compromise by reducing the scale of development and somewhat lessening the negative impacts of the increased density, traffic noise, and loss of green space. There are many, many trees that will be removed for this parking lot that were not shown or mentioned. Our entire view is changed by our the budding neighbors. Um, the site approval code states that the purpose of the approval process is to, quote, minimize adverse impacts of such development, promote development which is harmonious with surrounding areas, and assure public convenience and safety and adequate consideration of abutting landowners. The Garfield Street proposal does not meet these criteria, I believe, and it will change the character of our neighborhood. Approving this plan would create a dangerous precedent for the entire neighborhood and others like it. It will make it even easier for people to sell their land to developers eager to max out all of the existing green open spaces and build large multifamily dwellings and parking lots. The parking lot takes up half the space practically. I believe it is crucial to obtain and view for us missing information, including a traffic safety study, before making a final decision regarding the site plan. The site plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm John Sears. Um, I'm married to Jane Myers and 74 Straw Avenue. Um, I just want to add something to what she said um, about the impact on abutting landowners. It seems to me that that one of the effects has to do with privacy and um, the fence that is on the eastern side of property behind the parking lot doesn't go all the way to the street. And uh, we're going to be able to see that parking lot at an angle um, and therefore be exposed to light, lights and noise from that parking lot. But, but even greater concern is that the, uh, the deck or the decks on the third floor particularly, are gonna overlook all our backyards, all the houses around it. And since all the trees are coming down, um, except the one that's near the street, um, anybody out on that deck is gonna be able to look down into everybody's backyard. Um, and, um, and eliminating the privacy that we now enjoy. I mean, I know there are trees being planted, but they're gonna be you know, very small trees. And there's some trees along the, the property line now that are not big trees, but they're not big in girth, but they are 30, 40 feet high. And uh, I don't understand why would, you wouldn't choose some of those to be preserved because they're already grown. It's going to take 20 years for the little saplings to grow. Now, Johnny, um, Johnny Scarborough, who lives directly across from 14 Garfield, uh, submitted some written comments. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that he says. Um, I should, I'm sorry I didn't take my mask off. It would appear that there will be outdoor lighting needed around the building and in the parking area adding to the light pollution that we currently don't have in the area. We have very little light pollution at the, at the moment. And that's something that, that he understands from previous meetings that the city's trying to, to lower the light pollution in, in, our, in our municipality. And the other thing he says is um, that he knows that there are 12 spaces planned for this parking lot in the back, um, but will people always use them or be out on the street. You know, it's more convenient if you're gonna be going out again to park on the street. 
what happens when each apartment has several guests over? What then? Where do they park? Um, so he feels, as as Jane does, that there, there needs to be more examination of the impact on this very narrow Garfield Street that has no parking lot, no um, sidewalks. People have nowhere to walk on there. People walk in the street there. Um, people walk their dogs in the street there. So it, it's a it's a pedestrian corridor, and you're going to be, you know, filling it much more fully with with parked cars and moving cars. So, thank you. Thank you, and do know that we did see all the letters that were submitted. We have all read those, but feel free to. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Laura Fragamini, and I live at 5 Verona Street, which is the small street parallel. Um, and I want to thank you for your comments, because it reminded me of the impact of the new houses at the end of Garfield Avenue. When um, the Habitat houses were built, um, the first one that went up was three stories tall. And it looks directly into our backyard and it has significantly impacted privacy. And as you know, the other houses went up, anecdotally, the developers would say to us, gosh, we wish we really hadn't done that. It really did change the nature. And we wished we had stuck with the two stories or two with an attic. And so I just hope that you will look at that, maybe talk to the folks who developed that and really hear that that is similar in a way and it did impact our privacy and that nature of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I wrote a statement just because I feel more comfortable reading something. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, as a member of our community, I'm deeply troubled by the proposed multifamily housing project at 14 Garfield Street. I'm sorry, my name is Laura Battles, and my home, where I have lived for, since, nine, uh, since 20, uh, 2002, is situated uh, at the corner of Straw Ave and Garfield Street with clear straight sight lines uh, to the two triplexes units that New Way Homes intends to construct. While acknowledging the need for additional housing in our area, the impact that these oversized units will have on the character and well-being of the surrounding neighborhood must be considered. First and foremost, the proposed project poses a threat to the unique charm that attracted me to this neighborhood 22 years ago. The planning board should not grant approval solely on the basis of criteria C, cramming two three-story structures into a 15,000 square foot lot will never function harmoniously with the existing structures and open spaces of the surrounding area, area because it's a monstrosity. Secondly, I am concerned about the strain on our existing infrastructure. The addition of multifamily housing units will increase the demand for services and infrastructure. Considering the recurrent, reoccurring issues with stormwater and sewage drainage that we have experienced in this area on more than one occasion, I question that our current infrastructure can handle the added pressure. Third, as Ward 5 City Councilor Alex Jarrett knows, traffic flow is already an issue on Straw Ave. Multifamily housing units mean more vehicles, leading to increased traffic, traffic, tra traffic congestion and potential safety ha hazards in the neighborhood and nearby bike path. Fourth and last, the negative impact that this project would have on property values cannot be ignored. Over the past 22 years, I have invested significantly in improving the interior and exterior of my home. New Way's three-story units will destroy the character of my beloved neighborhood, thereby decreasing my home's value and those of my neighbors. In conclusion, I urge each of you to carefully consider the consequences of this proposed housing project. 
Let's collaborate to find alternative solutions that enhance rather than jeopardize our community. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Manuel Gross. I live at 11 High Street and my property abuts the back of that property that you're talking about. And everything that's anybody said, it's true. The people in there are gonna be looking down on my property and my I have built a really nice deck. Forget it, can't use it. Have to put up something. And I don't think a six story, a six foot high fence is going to do it. Uh, water runoff, I get a lot of that runoff from their property on my property. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'll tell you right now, it doesn't work. And uh, maybe they'll dump it down a sewer. I don't know. But I know my property uh, with that going up. Oh, and by the way, I grew up in the Boston area. And you see those houses? Looks just like that. You have a two by four space between the two of them. You can rap on your neighbor's window and say, would you pass salt? That's terrible. And they ruin the property. I don't know what they're gonna do with mine. And by the way, I got a piece of property along the side of my house. It's 150 by 75. I wonder how many of those I could put on it. And making it look at me looking things like that and saying, hey, I could do that too. But I don't want to. I'd like to keep my neighborhood like it is. If they have another solution to this other than that, I'd look to look at it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? Do you come on up to the podium and Good evening. I don't know if, if it's something to do with the mic system here, though, but I've had a hard time hearing you. I know I've got hearing aids, but I got them turned way up. But I don't know if everybody else is the same way. It's been hard to hear them. Yeah, we're here. Well, somebody didn't do something about this in the beginning. Anyway, my name's Larry Tatro. Live at, at Bridge Street in Northampton, but I grew up in this area. And I still own my folks' house in this area on Garfield Avenue. Now I noticed the picture that uh, New Way Homes presenter showed one three family house or three story house. That house has been there all my life and it's a two family, okay? And anywhere else all around Garfield Avenue and Garfield Street, Straw Avenue, which used to be Hoyoke Street. And then you come around the lower part of, of High Street. They're all single family homes that I know of. The only two family one that I know of is the one that was presented. And it was, you know, convenient for them to present the Menards house, which is up on Garfield Avenue, not on Garfield Street. All the houses on Garfield Street, especially where 14 Garfield Street is, the two houses directly across are both capes, single family houses. I grew up in this area, so I know it like almost like the back of my hand. And all these houses that are people that are representing themselves here, these three deckers, especially the third floor, is all gonna be looking down on them. Does the word uh, non-conforming fit in anymore here? Does it count? Because these houses are not conforming with this neighborhood. And a lot of people say, oh, you're against it. They talk about NIMI, not in my backyard. And they talk about elitism. You know, you don't want low income, income housing, whatever. We're not against development. There was a house standing there before, a nice house. I believe it was the oldest house in the neighborhood. McCarthy was the people that owned it. And it was Greek revival. And it had a year, uh, we were hoping somebody was gonna take it on and re revisit it and rejuvenate it. Cause I thought it was one of the prettiest houses in the whole neighborhood. About an 1860, 70 house, maybe Greek revival, really looked nice. 
But these houses here, there's nothing in that neighbor in our neighborhood as close as these two houses that are presented. What if there's a fire there or something on a windy day? I mean, I think you're gonna lose both of them. We're gonna lose both of them, right? Um I think as far as housing and low income housing, nothing wrong with that, as long as it conforms with the the neighborhood. And we have plenty of low Indian income housing in this area. We got all Meadowbrook apartments, we're right up, down off which is Straw Avenue now. And then up at the end of Garfield Avenue, where my home is, there's HUD housing. Okay. I just think, you know, some of these neighborhoods, people kind of move out here to be kind of still in town, but have a little country, a little openness. They're not going to be, there's not going to be a lot of openness for some of the neighbors of these houses on their side of the street. They're going to be looking at walls. And there are a couple of nice trees in there. There's several nice trees, but there's a couple of big ones, a sugar maple. And I believe the other one is a big white spruce. And what's going to happen to them? I mean, the way they're cramming things in here, I don't think there's going to be anything left. Anyway, I guess I had my say. Thank you for listening to me. We appreciate your perspective. Ma'am? We appreciate your perspective. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. My name's Nicole LaRue. I'm, um, I own a home on 38 Garfield Ave. And um, a couple of things. I feel like your presentation was really deceiving um, in showing different um, housing structures in the vicinity and the neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood is full of one family homes. And as others have said, Garfield Street, we're looking at capes oh, directly across from these homes. So I just feel like it was a very deceiving presentation in that regard. Um, I'm very concerned about safety. Um, Garfield Street, which already, it's already been said, is narrow. There's no curbs. There is no um, sidewalk. There is not space for cars to park safely along that 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 street. Um, I also, in the presentation, there was a comment about root systems, and um, I, this is not an area I know, but I heard that there's going to be a change in how there would be like runoff and moving it to the other side of the property by the drive aisle. And I just want to point out to those who may not be aware of the property that there are many large trees along that drive aisle as well. So I just want that to be noted as part of planning needs. Um, I mean, I, I echo a lot of what has already been said, but I just wanted to make comments about that, about safety, about the, the character of the neighborhood, yes, but also, um, you know, whether or not, um, I, like the storm drainage issues, whether or not our neighborhood can handle um, this, large of a property in such a small space. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience here that would like to speak? Well, um, I'm Alex Jared. I live at six high street, uh, as I live within 300 feet. I'm speaking only as a resident and not as a city councilor. Um, I'm in favor of new housing. I'm looking forward to meeting new neighbors. I wanted to speak to a couple of issues. Um, one was the, the large contiguous parking area. As I see it, it's not compliant with element four of the design standards in the URB code, um, though this may be waived. And um, the contiguous parking area, there's no trees planted to the south. And so I, that seems like there would be an awful, that would be a real heat island area um, in the summer. Um, and I would suggest that if we did, if with a small reduction in the third floor unit size to bring them below a thousand square feet, um, that would target smaller households, reduce the parking requirements by two spaces, create more green space, written would allow the opportunity to break up the large lot also had a couple questions about the um the hundred year storm 
calculations. I want to make sure that's updated for climate change and what we're expecting in the next hundred years. Um, and then the sidewalk, do we, um, there's no sidewalk that I see in the plans because it's, there's no sidewalk on the street, but there's only two more lots there that don't have a sidewalk. So curious when the planning board would require a sidewalk construction in site plan um, and when it doesn't and how that determination is made. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fran Mursky. I live at 63 Straw Avenue. I'm not directly impacted by what these poor people are going to see behind their houses. However, the issues I want to talk about, one is the sewer problem. Three houses on Straw Avenue this past year have had to have sewer issues. Ours was at the street. And even though we spoke with the Department of Public Works, they insisted that it was our problem. But the company who drained them said, no, it is not their property. It's in the street. Further down Straw Avenue, a second party got affected. There's a problem with the sewers. Then a third party right on the corner of Straw Avenue and, and um, uh, the street. Yes, that's you. Yeah. And I saw that whole yard was all dug up. There is an issue already. Add 12 more families. Where's the water going to go and who's going to pay for the sewers? We talked about safety a little bit earlier. You cannot get out of, of Straw Avenue now onto Locust Street. It's been an issue. It is extremely dangerous. At one point, the city had reserved slots along Locust Street. Beautiful. You could see traffic coming, so you weren't going to get hit. They minimized those parking spaces again. You cannot pull out of there. Put 12 more cars or more if there's more people having cars than just two for each family. How are you going to get out of the street then? Those are the issues that... I have concern for. As far as the bike path, that's a danger in itself. They do not stop at the stop signs for when they're biking. They have the right of way. I stop. I've told Alex Jarrett, I've told him before, I stop and I wait to make sure nobody's going through. I would think we should have the right of way. We don't. I now go up High Street and go on to Chestnut Street to get to a light so that I can get out of Straw Avenue. That's a shame. So add some more traffic. It's going to be a danger. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there any? Did you get any comments? We did. Um... And um, um, so, do you want? There are some chat comments. Do you want to hear those and then DPW comments, or do you sure. want DPW comments? Okay. Okay. Um, Amy Haig says, as a neighbor, I'm concerned about the. The supposed dangerous large tree. Mike isn't working, I think. I think the mic's here, but... So I'll speak louder. The microphone is not for the room. It's actually for Zoom. So <laughs> um, um, as a neighbor, I'm concerned about the supposed dangerous large tree that's to be removed. It's been a fixture in this neighborhood since I moved here in 1995. I'm aware of I'm unaware of any limbs falling. Am I wrong that um, if the arborist assessment is in favor of the developers? Am I, I'm sorry, there's something that got in the way here, sorry. Um, am I wrong that the arborist assessment is in favor of the developers? It's a beautiful tree and should it be removed just because it stands in the way of new way? Um, thank you neighbors for stepping up. I feel you, exclamation point, Amy Haig. Still. And again, 
My neighbor, my next door neighbors at the time wanted to buy that house, but were outbid by New Way. They wanted a big yard for their kids. It would have been so much better to have it renewed as a family home. And then a, a chat from Benjamin, good looking buildings, several projects being built in my neighborhood are planned to have one parking space for each unit. The 12 spaces for this project seems excessive. Fewer spaces would mean more yard space for the tenants. How about eight? This property is in walking distance of Florence Center, adjacent to the bike path next to the, um, the bike route. Maybe people will only need one car. A one-story house next to mine was demolished to build a new way home, three-story house. Now we have a nice new neighbor. Privacy changed. It's fine. Infill is part of how we address the serious housing shortage. I say this with an affordable housing project planned for my backyard. Um, Amy Haig, go Fran. John Scarborough Sr., what about snow removal and how and where is it going to be put? Parking on the street is very tough when it happens. Only one car can pass. If two cars park across from each other, um, no car can pass. What happens if a truck has to come up for delivery or EMT slash fire? And those are the end of the chat comments. So do you want me to go over the DPW comments? So, um, sure. Um, so the issues on the sewer line on Sura Avenue were related to root infiltration. So it's not a capacity issue. Um, and um, the assumption is that at some point it probably needs to be lined. Um, in terms of the stormwater infiltration, so the stormwater is being handled by infiltrating in the parking lot, as you saw in the plans, and um, there are very sandy soils, so um, the capacity there is um, good for that infiltration. DPW reviewed that. Um, the overflow is the only thing that would go subsurface below the driveway. It's an overflow um, in the extreme events, and that would go to um, Garfield. It would connect into this um, storm drain on Garfield. <clears throat> um, then just note uh, about the uh, parking. You all know that, you know, unless there's a restriction on on-street parking, parking can happen on any, can be placed on any street. So, um, and we, and the zoning does not require, oh, um, you know, visitor parking or excess parking anywhere because we have, you know, a street network that can serve for visitor parking. Minimum six, maximum 12. Okay. For parking spaces? Maximum 12, but it's one so it's one space per thousand square feet of floor areas and up to a maximum of two spaces per unit each of these units is it ranges between 1200 square feet to um, 1275 or something like that so over the 1000 threshold which means each would require two parking spaces um in terms of the lot size you know it's a 24 foot wide width between the parking. We only require 18 feet of backup space between parking spaces. So the lot could potentially be um, shrunk. And if there were an interest in um, putting a tree, you know, planting a tree or a couple of trees on that back line to increase the um, tree canopy on the Southern side of that lot, um, even without reducing parking spaces. What's the, uh, the building height requirement in what are we do our B? Right? Urban residential B allows um, 35 feet as measured to the midpoint of the peak. And, um, you know, I don't know what the height of was of the original structure, but it was a good two and a half story structure as well. Um, probably pretty comparable height, I would say.
Um, and then, of course, as you know, we've talked a lot about the housing um, and housing crisis and these units being 1,200 square feet are really um, um, pretty modest in terms of um, the total, you know, other types of units that are being brought on. So we've been looking at ways to encourage smaller units so people can get into the market and um you know, potentially move into single family homes if they so desire in the future, but this gets them a foot in the door because most single family detached homes are out of reach for people at this point in Northampton. <clears throat> All right, I got a couple questions. <laughs> I got questions more than comments. Are they apartments or condos? You need to tell us. Oh, I'm are. Stephen Ross, 57 Straw Avenue. Do we know the answer to that question? I don't actually know what to do. Does, it, does it matter to you? No. Okay. No okay. And do we know what the actual height is, Carolyn? Because I know these houses tend to be built with taller ceilings, and the, the house average in the area is not nowhere near the lucky. In the presentation, she said it was 32 feet. Seven and a half. Which is three feet below the maximum. Excuse me? In in the presentation, um, they said stated it was 32 feet, which is three feet below the maximum. Okay. They also stated it matches the houses in the neighborhood. And those houses they showed pictures of, if you were to go and see them, they were dramatically lower than 32 feet. So it's just not fitting for the neighborhood. And I don't know what's wrong with a couple of $800,000 houses here. I don't know why we need six more units in the neighborhood. I mean, he does those all day, every day. Why do we have six? I, you know, you talk about the um, neighborhood and and already having it. Well, yes, we do have it. We pull our share already in our neighborhood. Not that we're complaining, but why do we need more? I don't understand. So that's it. Thank you. I'm uh, Ruth Jacobson Hardy, and I live at 21 Garfield Street, which is across the street, um, somewhat diagonal from 14. And um, I would I would agree that this um, construction with the, these two uh, triple decker houses does not fit in with the neighborhood at all. My house is a small cape, three bedroom. You know, the house next we have we have six people that live on the north side of Garfield Street. So those are six people in four houses. And so they're going to be a lot of, a lot more people in that in that space than what we already have on one whole side of the street. So one of my concerns is traffic and just the congestion. Um it is it is not a big street. Um so uh, I don't understand why there have to be two houses, and I don't understand why there have to be three units in each house. That is it's just over the top in terms of what this street can accommodate and what fits in with this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Board, do you have any... Uh... Questions or a motion to close public comment? Let me just check the chat to see if there's anything else. Um, there's two, there's one more chat um, from Johnny Scarborough. Why was no traffic study done? It was a two story with an attic. I think that's reference to the former house. And that's all we have in chat. Um, I just, one thing that I think, and I, I don't know if you want to have more board discussion after you close the hearing or keep it open, um, but I do have some more comments. If um, So I don't know what you... I think there was some comments about that the driveway, the parking lot's not like 
totally totally minimized i don't know if the applicant has anything about the spacing of the parking lot that you want to talk about Yeah, so um, we're proposing this alternative parking design to keep it kind of in the rear of the property so that that's not what you're seeing as you're driving by. You're really seeing the residential structures. Um, the standard four illustrates different options if the parking is located along the side of the property. Mm -hmm. So we would prefer to to really just keep it in the back to really, you know, eliminate the the view from the road. I think the question is about the drive aisle specifically. That, Kellen, what did you say? The um, drive aisle? yeah. Could you um, would you be able to reduce the width, the um, backup width between the two bays of parking? So instead of twenty four feet, it's maybe twenty feet. Then you gain some more um, space on the rear where you could put additional trees. Absolutely, we would be amendable to that. Yep. Okay. Can you look at the Sure. You want with the trees or Can you zoom in a little bit? In the... I think the one you were on is maybe the landscape plan. Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Zoom in on that. which one would you like? That's the, fine. the layout plan. Okay, right. we'll zoom. That's in. good. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I've got a lot of things in my way. I saw some other comments, or maybe you're going to get into this, Carolyn, about the dumpster. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I think it would be appropriate to talk about the dumpster. Um, I don't, um, given the, the narrowness of the driveway, I don't think, uh, a truck would, a um, garbage truck will come down the driveway. I think it makes sense to have covered storage for, um, uh, recyclables and garbage, but um, no dumpster. So you'd have maybe roll out um, bins or something that could be stored there. Um, that also eliminates any potential for additional noise disturbance in, you know, going back into sort of the depth of that lot. Yeah, we can certainly accommodate that. And, um, you know, if additional space is needed due to the separate containers, we can always, you know, there's going to be a full basement. So they can use that for bike storage mm -hmm. um, to use that area for, you know, the sole purpose of like a covered trash and recyclable area. Um, so while you're there, would you speak to the snow removal question? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously areas that are not um, occupied by parking spaces, if there aren't as many um, tenants that need all of the parking spaces, possibly um, a parking space could be used for snow storage. Any excess that cannot fit on site would obviously have to be um, trucked off off site. And, you know, they would have an agreement with a, a uh, trucking company for that. Um, I also think it makes sense to discuss a little bit about the comment that um, um, Councilor Jarrett raised mm -hmm. or, uh, um, in terms of the sidewalk. So typically you do require sidewalk installation along the frontage of lots, uh, particularly to connect to um, to existing infrastructure or if it's planned infrastructure. Um, and I was just um, going to check. There is traffic mitigation required mm -hmm. for the site. So, you know, um, depending on, and I thought I was there. I'm sorry, I got put to the wrong place. I was, um, it may be appropriate to require sidewalk, for example, um, plus use the traffic mitigation to extend it as far as it can go if that goes one more lot to reach um, Straw or Garfield, but I just wanted to... What's the traffic mitigation though, $6,000? Five, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be... Get very far. Right. They don't buy some sidewalk. There's no sidewalk in Garfield at all. They don't pay Amazon. No, no, no. On, er, can you see Straw there? Uh, so just hypothetically, if, if, if we did require a sidewalk here which is something we run into constantly. And thank you, Alex, for bringing it up. 
we look forward to that enormous chunk of money that DPW is going to get to put sidewalks everywhere in the city. Um, <laughs> if we do require sidewalks for this lot, uh -huh. does that mean that the corner lots on Long Garfield that are facing the other sides, if they redo their driveway, they're going to be required to extend their the sidewalks along to Garfield and Straw? Because now there's a precedent for sidewalks on that on Garfield Street. So there wouldn't be, there's no trigger for creating sidewalk for, let's say, repaving your driveway. It would just be if it came to site plan. Right? If they came into site plan and they had to address their criteria for pedestrian access and, and separated pedestrian and vehicular travel, mm -hmm. then that would be the time that it would come in. So mm -hmm. if... Um, um, so if the sidewalk were installed along that edge, then um, I don't know how far you could get this. The sidewalk on straw is on the opposite side, so it's not going to connect to anything. Mm -hmm. um, so and we've done, you know, the planning board for years has required orphan sidewalks, right, for yeah. projects when they come in. And, you know, sometimes it takes years for either DPW to get to that block or for the next project to come and connect to that. Um, so that um, is a possibility. I'm just going up to Garfield to see um, whether it connects that way and it makes more sense to go that way. Um, but it is also on the other side um of Garfield. So it would not connect at all. And the lining of the sewer that you were talking about would not require them to redo the whole street and install a sidewalk as part of a DPW project. You mean if DPW were coming to line this, but this is a straw too. So um it's not directly on Garfield. Is that what you're asking? Oh the, the lining of yeah. the sewer was straw. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um So this one would be um you know it might make sense just to do one lot not knowing which direction the sidewalk I mean you because $5000 won't extend it very far beyond right um alternatively that $5000 could go into traffic mitigation which actually would then be pooled with other resources um, to create those traffic calming installations in the Florence area that um, Parking and Transportation Committee evaluates all the time. And so including the um, <clears throat> corner of locust and straw that was raised um, during public comment about that dangerous left and the speeds on Locust Street, um, traffic mitigation goes in to address those kinds of issues that come up sort of in the network and within the area. I mean, it seems, yeah, it seems like building a sidewalk from Garfield over to Garfield Ave would just require the taking down of a bunch of trees that are in the public right of way and would cause a whole yeah. bunch of other right. uh, headaches. Can I say something here? We're talking sidewalk, sidewalk, sidewalk. I have tried for almost 10 years to get the sidewalk fixed on Straw Avenue. I've called DPW. They tell me no money in the budget, no money in the budget. It's not that easy to get sidewalks put in. So don't try making it sound like it's going to be pretty. Let's fix what we've got first. I've been told, call the mayor's office. Call the mayor's office, left a message, invited her to come and see what the sidewalk looks like. We have a gentle old man who walks with his walker. He walks in the road because he can't walk on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And you are all so focused on a sidewalk. The bigger issue is this project is not a good one. So don't focus on sidewalks until you can fix the ones that are broken. Um. I also wanted to reiterate I mean, re for you and the public that this is a site plan approval. The total number of units is allowed. 
So you need to make sure that you're evaluating the criteria that they, it meets the design standards. So um, it's not a discretionary permit in that regard. So you can't say no because there's a concern that maybe it doesn't fit in the neighborhood. You just want to make sure it meets those design criteria. What, what are the criteria that tell us the number of units that are allowed? Um, so it's the combination of open space and parking and lot size um, are sort of the three main criteria. And so, you know, lot size first, you do the math and figure out, okay, the maximum I can do is say six units, but depending on how it's designed, you might not meet the open space or the parking. Um, so the smaller the footprint or the smaller the units, then the, the more ability to fit six units on the on the parcel. And walkways count towards open space, but right. That's... Correct. Parking. Right. And we don't really yeah, my my biggest concern is always snow storage, but they can just say they truck it off and that's fine. Can you speak up, please? Correct. So the question was about snow storage. And so like many places in the city, if there isn't enough area to store on site, then the owner is required to take the snow, uh, make arrangements to take snow elsewhere off site um, to maintain um, the parking. And of course, pulling the parking lot in, you know, will help with I, it as well. I like the idea of creating a 20 foot wide aisle between the parking spaces, which gives four more feet of green space on the, I guess, southern property line. If north is up, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> north is up? No, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if we create more green space there and uh, plant some trees that have a chance of getting taller, that might help some privacy concerns yeah. in 10 years, five years. Yeah. Can we get rid of the third floor decks? Um, you... That is an, I mean, yes, you have the jurisdiction to, to find if there is a negative impact to the design um, or maybe smaller balcony or something like that. Maybe that it's not. So I don't, I think it was 22 feet by 10. I just want to look at the plans again. Eight. Carolyn, if I may, just before we talk about the third story deck, that's a requirement for egress purposes. I think there's going to be a, a fire ladder. For... It has a sprinkler system, but with the sprinkler system, you have one entrance. As long as it's the, the second egress is an open air place. So okay. I think... <laughs> so it's a, it's a building code thing. Right, but the size um, can be modified potentially. So I think if as long as there's as far as I understand it, um, it's just a landing. Yeah, I don't see that for privacy issues. Yeah, I don't see the size of a deck or even. I mean, you can't stop someone from looking out their third story window either. I mean, I don't know. It's called living in a neighborhood. I don't know. Um, yeah, I was. The decks are open to the sides all around. I mean, they're just like. It's like a viewing platform, a beautiful one, but so I, I would see that's more than what you need for egress for fires. That's one thing. I was going to say, um, did you, when you mentioned sidewalks, uh, possibly on the other side of Garfield Street, was that, did I hear that correctly? I couldn't hear for sure. Because something about removing... As far as, as far as site plan review goes, we can only talk about what's in the right of way directly in front of the parcel. We can't go putting in sidewalks no, no, no. I'm not asking for. I'm not asking for a sidewalk. I just think when you discussed it, I I thought I heard uh, across the street. No, because that, that's where the trees. Okay, can can I just ask a question, a general question? Because when I was looking at the site approval code, it said 
that the purpose of the process, this process, is to minimize adverse impacts of such development and promote development which is harmonious with surrounding areas and assure public convenience and safety and adequate consideration of abutting landowners. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that it says as one of the purposes of the site review, not just the, you know, and so this is why I think many of us are here is not, you know, um, it's because of these factors, which I know are the, you know, in approval code 3501.1, that's the purpose of the site review, you know, the main purpose. So. So I feel it's more than just, anyway, please keep that in mind, please. Thank you. I mean, one of the things potentially is on the outer, you know, on the eastern, far eastern and western edge for that third floor deck that instead of, you know, maybe there could be more of a privacy um, side wall or something. Panel. Yeah. I'm really reluctant to like say because these are people who live in a multifamily building, they're held to a different standard of the type of deck they're allowed to have than anyone in a single family home could build without any permits whatsoever. So right. are these these are people's aunts and uncles and grandparents who are going to move into Northampton? They, you know, I don't know. What's wrong with the deck? I don't understand the problem. I mean that uh, you don't have to look at it. <laughs> it's a good point. Anybody in any single existing single family home that's two and a half stories can add a deck to the top floor of their attic space or their second floor without any kind of permit or review. <clears throat> and I think the other issue is of course that this is meeting the setback requirements that are, you know, standard throughout. Right. So there's not that encroachment. Um, yeah. I like the truth. The trash, I think, the dumpster, I mean, yeah, the trash truck that goes in head first or backs in or whatever, I don't know, is tricky. Just replacing it with, like, a place to store the trash in all the way back there, I don't know if that solves anything. But they're going to drag it all the way to the front, I guess, on trash day. Is that the idea? Yeah, they just have to pull it out rather than having I mean, I think it could be, yeah. Beeping and a big truck pulling in. To... Yeah, 7 a.m. So a couple of trash cans, not a dumpster. Beeping. I know that well. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. really all you would say is they can figure it out as long as no it's dumpster. not a dumpster for, you know, rear yard pickup or something. Yeah, trash co-op. All right. Got it. There's no site lighting proposed. There's no site lighting. And if there's any lighting um, affixed to the building, we'll require it as a condition that it be below the uh, 2700 Kelvin color temperature. I have a question for the applicant. Just in between the two rear decks, I see two black circles. And I'm curious what those black circles are. Yeah, so those are um, yard drains. OK. Thank you. Just to remediate any runoff. Um, the question also came up, and it wasn't clarified on the plan. We can certainly require that for submittal, but there are there is a row of trees along the western edge. Um, I think the applicant said those were uh, either straddled or on the uh, Butters property. So they're not noted for removal, so they would need tree protection um to make sure that they are adequately preserved um during construction so i would recommend that that be a condition just everywhere or on the western edge well the western edge and that northeasterly uh, the, the tree that may be the city's uh, a public shade tree on the northeast corner um, would need to follow the city standards for public shade tree protection. Um, but the ones on the westerly boundary um, would be outside of the um, public shade tree jurisdiction, but in the planning board's jurisdiction for protection. Okay. Is we get a plan that the arborists report keys to 
I couldn't. Yes, in the arborist report, but they really only focused on two trees on the easterly side. So the spruce, there was mm -hmm. the ones that were over 20 inches. Right. Like I see reference to like an EX drawing in the civil set, but I don't see an EX drawing. Yeah, that was. Um, oh, here it is. Yeah. But... Trees aren't all indicated, though. No, that's correct. So we just focused on the trees that. The, the significant that. trees, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's indicated on the layout um, drawing. Do you have any issue with the tree protection on the neighbor's yard? Then? No. There is a tree over 20 inches in diameter and it, um, by 70 straw. There are other trees on the eastern boundary. I don't. Are those going to all be removed? There's a lot. Of, there's several of them. You know. Not if they're. Yeah. So, um, as you know, per the site plan review process, we have to hire an arborist who does a inventory of the existing significant trees, right. which are greater than 20 inches in, on, um, in diameter, that are located on the property, as well as any that you know the drip line extends over the property. So um, a tree protection schematic or plan um, wasn't specifically submitted. However, you know, we will definitely, that could be a condition that we could um, provide that. Is there any, um, you know, usually we talk about um, trees that are being planted to replace significant trees that are taken down. I know that there's the one that needs to come down per the assessment, which is a significant tree. So is there um, anything noted on here about trees that are being planted in? So the significant tree that was identified, um, it was identified as hazardous and it needed to be take, uh, taken down um, due to the hazardous, hazardous nature. However, we are proposing um, various different plantings and we can certainly provide that tree replacement table, just kind of noting the, the caliber of trees that we are replacing. I believe it was, and, and I have to verify, but it was around like 32, 33 inches of caliber that we were replacing. <clears throat> So hazardous trees don't trigger don't the replacement, count. but they the number of trees they have um, fifteen trees okay. in the planting plan um, of two and a half to three inches each, but plus wh where however many you all want to condition for the rear lot line. Mm -hmm. Do you guys like that idea? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that was just the spruce. The spruce is the one that's the has that's right. considered hazardous. Right. So if we do approve this, the the list of conditions that um I want to make sure we talk about them all. Um that uh we are gonna require that the fence in the back not be PVC, be wood or other non-plastic material. Um, and that the siding is uh wood or cementitious and i believe it's already called out to be fiber cement um a, we're going to have a condition that there's no site lighting allowed um a condition that no dumpster is allowed um we're gonna uh, have a condition that prior to certificate of occupancy the applicant um is going to need to show a plan uh that they're in compliance with the 40 percent open space we will require that for CO. So I know you guys will make sure you don't invest a ton of money and not have that. Um, there will be a one-time payment in lieu of traffic mitigation of $5,000 for the five additional units. Um, we'll require that any building lights on the exterior of the building meet our color temperature maximum of 2,700 Kelvin. Um, it sounds like we we would have a condition of tree protection for the existing trees. On the easterly edge and also the 
public shade tree on the northeast corner would have to comply with the city's public shade tree protection requirements. Um, Should we note the new location of the stormwater overflow, or is that? Yeah, I think I think sort of at the at the outset there should be you um, revised plan sets that incorporate all of the comment the plan changes that were described by the applicant in the hearing plus any conditions that you all um, want to apply to the project so that they all get incorporated as a pre-construction plan set that have all of these. So pre-construction plan set. So maybe we have a list of what's going to be on that. Um, one of our conditions would be that we're requiring the parking lot be made smaller. Reduce the they reduce the, the, the backup drive -up. space so that it turns out to be tw twenty feet right in depth instead of twenty four, and plant trees. We need spec. We should probably specify at least something about those trees that we're going to want quantity or height or what should we? Um, so the width of the property is. What's the frontage? A hundred feet. Trees on the side. I mean, it seems like two more. Uh, makes sense. The, oops, sorry. It was in that table, but my it's a hundred feet. Okay, so um, the width in the rear is a hundred feet, but you have. So I would think um, you could have at least three trees along that back line. Yeah, because the the area with the bike storage and the dump trashes would also move accordingly. Yeah, everything would move off four, four feet, feet yeah. to the north. Okay, we didn't close public comment yet. Um, Another condition I, I mentioned this in my presentation that that the fence on the eastern side only goes part way, and it needs to go all the way so that so that. Everybody's backyard is protected from from you know sight lines toward that parking lot, because otherwise you know we're going to get lighting lights coming in so forth. Yeah, so no, I understand. Condition and I, I still don't understand about trees because there are a lot there are a lot of trees along the eastern border. You know they're not twenty feet in diameter. They're they're maybe five five right. inches, six inches, seven inches, but those are you know trees that are 30 feet tall but they provide some protection these planting trees that are planted are not going to provide any protection for years 15 20 years so why not look at those trees and select some to to maintain because they're already grown they're already doing something um so the back a lot and the back of a lot too yeah that are big and yeah so the planning board doesn't really have jurisdiction over trees that are under 20 inches, correct? Um, I mean, no, the plan in front of you is showing sort of the development layout. There's grading, the um, the construction right. um, would uh, likely have an impact on those trees. So they're not showing the saving those trees. That's what they're they're proposing to plant trees back. Um, in terms of the fence, it does go beyond the parking lot limits, and then there are trees and shrubs proposed on the on the property line. So, um, I I think the shade the the fence line um, extends beyond the edges of the parking lot to protect headlight um, shining into the rear lot yeah. line. So it's really just, um, I mean, you all can debate whether it's appropriate to add more vegetation or um, fence line, but, um, you know, the applicant is shown sort of completely surrounding that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
Okay, and then we're going to close public hearing here real quick. Well, I'm, I'm I mean, having a hard public, time not... understanding the process. Laura Battles again, 88 Straw Ave. Um, it, it, it just feels as though this is um, like a done deal, you know, and, and I just want to return to the concerns that my neighbors and I have that the criteria C does not feel like it's being respected and our wishes aren't being respected. And the fact that these three-story structures just do not, function harmoniously and never will even if there's a hydrangea bush that they push in plant in that it's just never going to function harmoniously with the existing structures and open spaces of our neighborhood it's not there we have capes single story ranches so we have Dutch gambrels we have a farmhouse we have but we don't have these three story you know, the density of construction that's being proposed here, it just does not fit in. And I, and, and it just feels like we're on this train ride and I don't, I don't understand how, can, how can we stop this process at least to have it evaluated, to look at the impact of traffic, to look at the impact of safety, to look at, to just, just hit the pause button. Like Thank you. Deal. Yeah, that's what it's feeling yeah, like to me. Deal. Right. That's what it's feeling like to me. And it's and it and I'm resenting it okay. being bulldozed. We, we do hear you and we do understand. We do. Okay. I mean, there is a process that took place to get it to this point. Yeah. There are rules and regulations that have been set forth that um this particular applicant is operating within. We do understand what you're asking of us. We understand your comments. Uh, we don't take this, we, none of us take this, what we do lightly, um, but we are weighing, we are weighing, we are individually looking at this, the way we each look at it. So I, I, I might... there's, there's also a difference between minimizing uh, adverse effects and making zero effect. I don't think there's anything in any of the laws that say there's going to be no effect. That's just not how life works. And saying that there's going to be um, a harmonious well, doesn't mean it's, the, that, it doesn't mean it's going to mirror. That's what the city of Northampton sets forth. Well, harmonious doesn't mean it's the same. It means it's in accordance. It's right. in accordance. No, I mean, the golden ratio Cuba can be in harmony with each other. It doesn't mean they're the same. No, I'm not suggesting that so, they're the same. The point is that every property owner in the state, the Commonwealth, or in most states in this country can build on their land what the zoning within the town allows and what they're proposing is allowed by our zoning. Um, the other, oh, yeah, I don't know if you want to close the hearing. Yeah, so you mentioned to close public comment? Somebody? Sure. I will move to close the public hearing. What is the public hearing? Well, we had a motion and we had a second. Um, I don't know if anybody heard that. I might, I might just, maybe I can just clarify. So I think you've heard um, several different viewpoints um you've heard people saying that it's not in you've heard several you've heard lots of viewpoints you've heard from some people who say we have small capes and ranch houses that are single family homes therefore this tall um triplex or two triplex don't fit you've also heard people say well if it was just four units it would be better and if it were a little bit smaller and it would be better so there, so I think people, different people have different ideas of what might fit in. And there's, and I think across any application or any project, you will have, um, you know, the massing um, may contain fewer or uh, more units. And the unit count, as we, as I described before, is based on the lot size. So it shouldn't, if the unit number is allowed, the board and all the other criteria being met, the board can't turn it down just because it's six units and not four units, for example. Um, and so, and of course, any if this were if this were to 
single unit on the property at the same height, um, you would be reviewing it regardless of how many units were within, except for the parking area in the back, you'd be evaluating that. Um, so, and you take public comments, obviously, and determine what makes, what needs to be modified to make sure those design standards are being met. Okay. You say there are many, many people have their own different ideas, but if you listen to all of the people who were here, I think we all think the same way. This is a bad project. Thank you. It does not belong here. I don't care what zoning says. We're going to pretty, pretty this up and it's still going to be an ugly development. Alex, did you want to speak? Thank you. Um, I wanted to speak to the parking area again. Um, I would encourage you to reduce that to the minimum size that is allowed under the codes to reduce the amount of runoff, to reduce the heat island effect, um, and uh, increase the green space. Thank you. I'll go on with the counselor's recommendation to go to 18 instead of 20. I also move we close the public hearing. For a second. I'll second. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Yep. Closing public comment. We close public comment. It okay. It could be recorded. The audio it is. Field. It's being recorded. Because we're completely against it. Okay. We close the public comment. We closed pub, closed public comment. No, closed it. Closed it. What about So we should change the condition for the twenty foot drive aisle to eighteen. Foot. Eighteen spaces. It's an eighteen, 18, 18 foot 18, drive aisle. Eighteen foot drive aisle. Eighteen foot spaces. drive aisle with twelve spaces. Yep. You're getting it right. 12 is required. So 18 it, foot. 18 eight, is required. 12 spaces. Spaces 18, are required. 12 spaces required. 18 foot drive aisle. Drive aisle. Required. Okay. Board, do we have any other comments? Conversation, debate? Uh, trying to think if there are other conditions. So, um, we're talking about moving the the trees into the the tree belt, right? That was one. Mm -hmm. Moving those trees into the right of way to be um, shade trees, city shade trees. Right. Okay. The applicant said they were amenable to that, and the right. tree warden said he was amenable to that. <laughs> Okay. And then I think we were talking about three trees along the back right. property line. A minimum of three sh three shade trees. Did we need to specify anything about height or speed of growth or anything like that? You could specify a minimum of planting size of two inches, I would say. I don't think we want them to be um, like decorative trees, though. We want them to be trees that grow tall. So the um they're proposing Tupelo and River Birch and this is the other one. The Tupelo um are on the front as well and those are large the large growing trees. So maybe it makes sense to have sort of front lot line and rear lot line. I don't know. It's fine by me. I'm not I'm no expert. Okay. <laughs> Are we clear on conditions? Do we need to go through those again, list those again, or, or um, do that? I have them. I can run through them if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, there were a couple. Um, uh, I'm just looking through here. Oh, that's okay. That'll be, that's a DPW standard anyway. Um, so prior to issuance of a building permit or 
site work, the applicant shall um, submit revised plans showing modifications of the conditions herein. Um, yeah, I think you need to say it a little louder just so people can hear you in the room. Okay. Um, prior to issuance of a building permit or site work, the applicant shall revise uh, the site plan submittal set to incorporate conditions herein, including uh, revisions of the site showing the reduction of the uh, parking drive aisle um, to 18 feet and the installation and, and tree planting to include three additional shade trees on the rear lot line um, that are a minimum of two inches and preferably match the Tupelo on the front lot line. Um, the front trees uh, proposed shall be planted in the right of way. Um, there shall be no dumpster shown on the site. Um, sorry. Um, stormwater overflow. The stormwater um, overflow relocated to um, be under the driveway access. Um, the fence details shall include wet wood fence or other non-plastic material. Um, and prior to issuance of a building permit, tree protection shall be installed along the westerly property line and checked by staff. The northeast, the tree on the northeast corner shall be uh, protected and shall be subject to public shade tree protection standards under the jurisdiction of the tree warden. Um, general conditions, no site lighting is allowed. All building lights mounted to the side of the structure shall uh, have color temperature of no greater than 2,700 Kelvin. Um, Prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall submit a plan showing compliance with the 40% open space and make a one-time payment in lieu of traffic mitigation for the additional five units added to the site in the amount of $5,000 to address the traffic requirements in 11.6. And I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Did we miss anything? I had everything on my list I, I would move we approve the project with the conditions that Carolyn just read so well we have a mo motion to approve in a second all in favor okay did you just approve it who was who moved what if our I did moved by Dave David and yeah. okay. second by Stacy Stacy Okay, so a few other items on our agenda for the evening. Um, we have uh, four sets of meeting minutes. Sorry, we have a hearing still going on here, so you can take your conversation on, but we need to have quiet so we can have the hearing. You're welcome to stay and listen if you want. Um, uh, those meeting minutes would be October 12th, October 26th, November 9th, and December 14th. I move to approve those sets of minutes. Second. 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 Okay. We have motion to approve all four sets and seconded. Motion by Chris. Seconded by uh, Stacy. All in favor? Yep. No objections. So all four sets? All four sets. Okay. That, were you guys voting on the A and R plan? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, not, not yet. Not yet. No. Uh -oh. No, not yet. We were just doing minutes. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, four sets: October twelve, October twenty-six, November nine, and December fourteen. Okay. Great. Okay. So, um, let me pull up the A and R. Um. Maybe want to wait until the noise quiets down. I don't know. Sure. That'll give me time. What's up? That'll give me time to pull this up. Um, 
Okay. Oops, wrong one. Okay, this is an approval not required plan on the end of Landy Avenue, where Landy is a one um, block street between Nonatuck and Riverside. Um, there was a lot um, that had a house on it that's been since demolished. This plan would divide it into two parcels. Um, each exceeding the frontage requirements and the lot area requirements um, in the urban residential B district. So it would just need, and I don't, do you need me to zoom in on that? It looks a little small. So the frontage for lot two is 104 feet. The frontage for lot one is 80.9 feet. I move to endorse this ANR on Landy Avenue. Second. All in favor. ANR is approved. Okay. Thanks. Is it? Thank you very much. I think that is it. All right. So we need a motion to adjourn. If we have nothing else, so moved. <laughs> I will mention your job. A second. <laughs> the skeleton crew. Okay, all in favor. All right, adjourned 9 04 p.m. <laughs>